Welcome to our lecture online. Another very useful form of the Dirac delta function is when the function is multiplied when we take the derivative of the function and that derivative is multiplied by x. And we can show that that is equal to the negative delta function of x. All right, how do we show that? Well, it turns out the trick is by using integration by parts, where we know that the integral of u dv is u times v minus the integral of v du. So we're going to start with the following. We have some arbitrary function, which is defined over all values of x, f of x, and we're going to multiply it times this form of the delta function times dx. All right, so we can then write it as follows. We can take the x and put it in front here, write it as x times the function of x times the derivative with respect to x of the delta function dx. And then we have to realize which is the u and which is the dv. So what we're going to do is we're going to let this portion of the integral be u. So let u equal x times f of x and let dv is equal to the d dx, the derivative with respect to x of the delta x dx. Now if we take the derivative of this, so when we say du is equal to, now we know that we have a product here, so we take the first times the derivative of the second, f prime of x, plus the second, f of x, times the derivative of the first, which is simply going to be 1. So this is, well, we'll worry about that later. Then here we take the integral of both sides, so we can say that v is simply equal to not the derivative of the delta function, but simply the delta function. All right, now let's plug that into our equation. So we can then say that this is equal to u times v. Now u is equal to this. So we have x times f of x multiplied times v, but v is the delta x. And of course, since we have an integral with, with limits, we have to evaluate that from minus infinity to infinity. All right, now we have minus the integral of v du. Now v was the delta x and du was this. Now I'm going to write this first and that second because it makes it a little bit easier. So that makes it, uh, we have x times f prime of x plus f of x, and so we don't have to worry about the one, it's one times f of x, multiplied times, so this is multiplied times v, so we have du times v or v du, so times delta x times dx. And again, the integrals are the integration integrals are from minus infinity to infinity. All right, so let's evaluate this. First of all, when we plug in the upper limit, notice we get delta of infinity. And of course, we know that the delta function only has any meaning other than zero when x equals zero. So when you take the upper limit, delta of infinity, that's simply equal to zero. And delta of negative infinity, that's zero as well. So this whole portion right here simply becomes zero. So this is zero minus the integral. Hmm. So let's take a look here. Ah, remember the rule. Ah, I had to look at that and say, okay, what do we do here? But remember this, if we have an integral of f of x times delta x dx, evaluated from minus infinity to infinity, that is simply equal to the function evaluated at zero. So here we can see that this is some function times delta x dx, which means we can evaluate the function at zero. So this becomes zero minus, zero minus the function evaluated at zero, which is the function right here. So it would be zero times f prime of zero plus f of zero, which is the result of that integral. Now notice 0 times f prime of 0 is simply 0, so this becomes negative, the function evaluated at 0. Now this, by definition, if we go here, if we put a negative here, we need to put a negative there. So this is, by definition, the negative of the integral of f of x times delta x dx from negative infinity to infinity, or we can put the negative inside, and we can say that this is equal to the integral from uh, negative infinity to infinity of f of x times a negative delta x, oop, delta x like this, 
times dx. And notice what I've done. So this is equal to this. So if I put this inside brackets, and I put this inside brackets, and I get the very same result if this is equal to this, then inside the brackets must be equal to this. But in other words, x times the derivative with respect to x of the delta function, the Dirac delta function of x, equals the negative Dirac delta function of x, which is what I have over here, which means that that must be correct. So by utilizing the integration by parts and the definition of this, we can show that that is indeed the case. So from now on, if we see something like x times the derivative with respect to x of the delta function, that is equal to the negative delta function of x. And that is how it's done. All right, is that a wrap for today? Yeah. Okay.